Hey guys, welcome back. BDCKR here. We're back with Season 4, Episode 2 of our newly revitalized Q&A and a and T. Mostly the same, but maybe slightly better. or more T? Worse or different. Yeah. Yeah. One more letter. <laughs> so, uh, and an ampersand. Yes. Getting right into the questions, and then out of them eventually. Uh, the first one comes from Aditya Sharma. Uh, and they say, I also have full Flashpoint team, level 50, Elite 5. And every time I face a full Flashpoint team in online battle and lose because Deathstroke's special attack. Please give me a solution how to beat a full Flashpoint team. So perfect for this question. We are facing a full Flashpoint team. They are not fully geared, so it's going to be easier. But the main issue for beating the team is getting frozen out because of a glitch where Batman stays on the screen. He doesn't move. You're stuck. You can't really do anything. You can't win. You can't lose. I guess that's the the biggest issue for beating it because that makes it literally impossible the and, second it triggers. Right, and we're going to get the secondary issue of how to beat it because they're just a really good team. Mm -hmm. So the first part is because it's triggered by Deathstroke's passive pirate crew where your teammates come in on the special. So there's a few sort of broad strategies for doing this, which we, we've already done in, in here. One is you knock out Deathstroke before he can do a special. Mm. If he doesn't do a special, pirate crew doesn't trigger, nothing happens. So... To that end, you could, well, you could knock him out, but you could also drain his power to prevent the special. Uh, you could knock out Batman before Deathstroke performs a special, which is just as good. Now, it's possible that Aquaman will also uh, work, that potentially he might be the one that causes it being stuck, but we've only ever seen the glitch being uh, with Batman. Mm -hmm. um, and Or you could pray that Pirate Crew doesn't trigger because... It does, it's possible that it won't. It doesn't trigger every time, but basically, in my experience, it triggers with his first special every time, and then it's a little bit random, but still more than 50% triggering after the first special. Yeah, so that's one issue for beating um, the Flashpoint team. But from the way that you phrased it, it seems like there's a decent chance that you mean they're just very difficult to beat. Right, because they are yeah. a hard team. They do a for huge sure. amount of damage, right? Um, and so the strategy that I can sometimes use with that, like if I'm facing a Flashpoint team, well, here's the thing. I'm usually using the Flashpoint team, so I'm not too worried. Yeah. But because I do a buttload of damage too. Mm -hmm. But if you use your tank to let your teammates build up power, then you can use your special twos. They're not exposed as long because they do so much damage, right? The crit damage and the crit boost with the destructive blows that mm -hmm. you can't, there's not a lot of room for mistakes. Or you use your basic damage dealer to take them out as quickly as you can because that takes less time than it does to build up specials usually and even if your team is built for specials it doesn't um it's often not that effective a strategy because you need to hit them a few times and the more you hit yeah. them the more chance they have to hit you oh oh you know what's something really interesting that that um occurs to me what's interesting flashpoint team so if we look at the broader carry not just beating a flashpoint team but winning in the context of a Flashpoint oh, team. Oh, defense teams. Right, so we leave this team up all the time. We play with it, and we leave it up. And I don't know if you noticed, when we started the screen, you could see that we'd, in, in this video, there were four defensive wins in a row that were showing up on the screen. Yeah, which is pretty great. That's actually a pretty high level of consistency. Right, but the danger with the Flashpoint team is, well, you see it when you get stuck and you can't finish the fight. Exactly, because there's no way to end the fight, so there's no way for you to beat them. So there's no chance. Even if somebody doesn't want to rage quit against your team, if they can't beat it, they quit, you get no points. Yeah. So if you're using a full Flashpoint team and leaving it on defense, you're going to miss out on a lot of potential battle points if you cause the glitch for someone fighting against you. I, I never even really considered that. Yeah, so what you really need to do, so, because if, if they fight you and they finish the fight, there's a good chance you're going to win. So don't leave a loadout with a high chance of Deathstroke doing a special early. Mm. And you would think from our loadout that there's a high risk, given that Deathstroke has Razzle Glow Scimitar. But Flashpoint Batman, he's in the first slot. He does, doesn't have any defensive gear. He's got no defensive protection. So someone who's trying to avoid the glitch can by just knocking him out then mm. it won't happen so when we look back at the stats for winning defensive fights we can see that many of them batman was knocked out and he's often the only one after having done very little damage so last season we won 22 out of 29 fights which is pretty decent mm -hmm. given that we're earning between 8 to 10 thousand battle points per fight where it's the equivalent of another 44 wins for really nothing for those who care yeah so that's pretty significant so there we go our next question comes from row two four six eight 
And this is just a snippet of a larger comment. But they say, my tank setup is Godly Fourth World Chestplate, Lex Score Helmets V2, and Killer Croc Evolved. Um, and then in brackets, it's a fantastic card, which I rarely see you use. Why is that? And so that's what we're going to address specifically. Right. Um, so it's it's basically opportunity cost. I mean, it's not a bad card in and of itself, right? The Killer Croc Companion Gear has no pretense about being anything except defensive gear, right? So 30% uh, damage reduction on specials, 20% damage reduction on basics, and 30% damage over time damage reduction for Suicide Squad teammates. So, you know, if you're going to use it, you definitely put it on tank. But, okay, so let's take a look at all the three abilities. The big damage over time isn't a common problem, and it's an ability that only helps Suicide Squad teammates, so that makes it even less useful. Yeah, it's a really specific ability, and it only affects really specific characters. So the combination, the chance that right. you would have been playing with a team that could benefit from it, and it would come up, is pretty right. remarkable. Uh, right. Really, really low, I'd say. Sure, sure, I, exactly. Um, the other ability of 30% reduction on specials, th that sounds pretty good, and it is, but if you're not blocking, damage from special twos is typically high enough that you're still getting knocked out, unless you're blocking. Mm -hmm. So, in which case, boost the gear that bo boosts your blocking ability can be just as good as that, right? Yeah. 20% uh, damage reduction on basics is decent, but putting into context, right, Bronze Nightwing's passive reduces basic damage by 25%, yeah, which is better. Mm -hmm. And Silver Nightwing's passive, 50% is the best. I mean, ideally, if there was a good Gold Nightwing that had like a 50% basic damage, this would be a great gear on him to make him kind of the ultimate tank, right? Because taking right. taking even less uh, damage would just make it really, really difficult for people to kind of crack him open, right? right. And, and really get at him. Yep. But as is, there's... It's, it's not enough to really be totally transformative. It's enough to be good. It's good. It'll yeah. help. Right. But now, if you compare that with our favorite tank loadout, right? So on uh, slots, we've got Astro Harness on Aquaman, right? You can see it right now. He's got three periods of invulnerability. And if you've been watching our weekly Q&A and T videos, you'll see how useful it is when you're facing Killing Joke Joker in first all, slot. All two of them. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so he, he, we tag him in as our tank immediately after knocking out Killing Joke Joker. And Aquaman eats a super, if you tag him in at the right time, takes no damage. And I think we've demonstrated a couple times already. So yeah. sometimes we don't even need to do that because of Deathstroke's extended special one. Uh, so when they tag in, they've got, um, they're still taking more damage. And I can often do another special one even when they've got three barrels of power. Yeah. But that's a whole other story, right? Um, the fourth world gear uh fourth world gear set the chest plate we've got there's 20 percent take no basic attack damage which on average is as good as a 20 percent basic damage reduction from that you get from killer croc that's true but you get a 40 percent health boost too plus 30 percent reflect all specials while blocking yeah so that actually when you when you put the 40 percent health boost you essentially get more bang for your buck right right that, um from basic damage you get the same amount block but you also get more health so when you, they do hit it's less damaging to you right for the slot you're just better off as yeah it, when you're using it for tank now the last thing we've got is the fourth world uh, helmet and it's got a 25 percent blocking boost which is also really good but the key is that it's a second piece of fourth world gear which gives us a revive with 31 percent of health yeah um so using killer croc companion gear to replace any of the three pieces makes our tank weaker less effective as a tank mm -hmm. and i mean that being said if you're talking you as in us or you in general, uh, we still do see Killer Croc Companion gear on opponents. Um, and But I wonder if that's related to the fact that Survivor's been glitched on Android for months, where it doesn't give anything except for the Suicide Squad gears. That's actually a possibility. You've made a bunch of connections today that I don't actually think I would have considered otherwise. Yeah, I, so, wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought of that. I think it's possible. So we actually answered most of your question originally, like in the, in the comments, but I thought this sort of was worth a little bit of a, a little bit more rambling. Yeah, and so as yeah. a springboard into some kind of really full-on rambling, we've okay. got uh, two questions here. I don't know if we want to talk about one than the other, maybe. And we might need extra footage to do yeah. that. Yeah, so the first one comes from Zildjian Rucker. Might have mispronounced that. Did my best. Powered through it. Um, <laughs> let, let me know if it's wrong. Uh, we, always, we always like learning how to pronounce things and being a little better kind of spoken in that way right. so anyways they say hey so i was thinking today that maybe injustice is about done coming out with new content the way they're pushing the new challenge characters so people can get multiple copies just a thought would love to hear what you guys think so what do you think do you think they're done 
I think they're slower. I think they're always getting slower. I don't think for a while now they've they've sped up at all mm-hmm. in the rate that it's coming out with. But I don't think they're done yet. I feel like they've they've produced for a long time. And uh, although it seems like some YouTubers are actually fully moving over to Injustice 2, I feel mm-hmm. like overall there's still enough community support for Injustice 1, and I think our channel is proof of that. Yeah. That there's at least a decent chunk still to the point where... Um, where, where I, I, I don't think they're finished with it yet. I hope right. they're not, and I don't think they are. Now, see, my, my gut reaction, because I hate being wrong, my gut reaction is to say we're in such uncharted territory now with a mobile game that's been around for more than four years. Oh, for sure, yeah. That the fact that they have any content that you can say is new, even in the last few months... Is really impressive, yeah. It is. Especially because it's a game that doesn't actually have as much online interaction. I know the more popular games that can sustain themselves for long times, like Clash of Clans, right. are really, really, really heavy on online stuff and right. interacting, like, their, their social elements and all that stuff. For, sure, so you don't need new content, right? Yeah, where this, the only social element is basically, like... Talking about Forums it. and stuff, yeah. So forums, yeah. this YouTube channel, other people who have right. their own stuff and, like, the the Game Facts board and stuff like that and the Reddit, right? Right. But there's no real... Like social interaction baked into it, and I gotta tell you, GameFAQs board has been dead lately. There's really yeah. been hardly any kind of action on that. So, uh, yeah, I think what we got has already been much more than I think we we had any right to expect from right. them, and I I remain hopeful that there's still more, okay. and I think there probably is some. Speaking of connections, though, this is like the perfect example of the fallacy of inductive logic. Is it inductive? So inductive means you look at what history has shown you, and based on what history shows you, this is what you expect in the future. So what history has shown us is that every time people have said that injustice is dead, it hasn't been. But also, on the other hand, I guess, um, there's been a bunch of other games that NetherRealms has abandoned when new... Yeah. Well, well, technically, the, the, the thing about injustice is that newer stuff came out, and it was worse, and then we kept on working with this. Yep. And the reason why is because you never had the same kind of adopt base with the new stuff. I think we might be getting a similar kind of adopt base with Injustice 2, which is the only thing that I think puts us into maybe a little more jeopardy. Yeah. Well, you know, the sun has risen every day up until now, and mm. so I'm, I, I'm guessing it'll keep on rising, and my my gut reaction is to be non-committal and say, who knows? But my heart says I think it's going to keep up, and I want it to keep up. Ooh, yeah. our footage is done, and part of me is thinking maybe we'll just motor through the last few questions because I want to celebrate the fact that uh, we just finished our second account getting it to level 99 and completely filling the battle points, which and is you, kind of a bit of an achievement. You know what? It's kind of funny in a way. This next question would be actually a little bit more appropriate maybe without visual content. Oh, that's true. Um, because this comes from Anonymous B., and their question is, have you guys thought about trying out podcasting? You have the voice, and then in brackets S, voices, of um, and personality. All you need are topics. I don't mean a, and I don't mean a gaming podcast. I mean an interesting podcast revolving around what interests you. I'm interested. And so that's actually, that's that's something that's really cool to hear. And I want to thank you first before we get into it. It's, it's a very nice compliment. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And one of the reasons why it's so nice is because, not you so much, but me personally... A huge percentage of the media that I consume is actually podcasts. I I listen to podcasts while doing a ton of stuff. Any any opportunity I can, I, I'm I'm listening to podcasts. Yeah. So um, to be told that you think we could do a good one is really cool because I feel like some of the smartest and funniest people I know yeah. um, are are the kind of people who podcasts I listen to. So maybe before we go rambling on about the podcasts that we like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to quickly say I think. In my future, there's probably not a lot of podcasting because, as you say, it's coming up with the topics. And having had a YouTube channel for as long as we've had, I can tell you that one of the hardest things is coming up with a topic that's doable. Yeah, I think I think that kind of content cycle is really, really difficult. And I, I feel like I would really struggle with any kind of consistency of upload or consistency right. of quality or really any of that. Because consistency actually is probably the biggest part of it, right? You can be good, but if you're not consistent people are going to sort of wander away yeah and so i think like on one hand i would like to start a podcast i think if that was something that i could be good at and do like on a regular basis and there was some kind of you know like like a platform for sustainability but i don't think that's there i think i would have trouble with almost every step along the way i don't think right now we've got a big enough adopt base for it to be worth it i think building an audience would probably be uh, pretty slow. And, th- what, 
Yeah, oh, I, I totally agree with that. I wanted to add one other point too, that the in YouTube at least, the potential for ad revenue is baked in. Yeah, that's true, because you post anything and you get money when people watch it, and that's it. Podcasts, you have to do sponsors. Right, so you have to hustle a little bit, and that becomes another job itself. Or, I mean, people will come to you, but you have to be a certain amount of popular to get anybody to bother. Right, right. Yeah. So I think to make it worth the time to make it... I mean, if you're doing a hobby, you don't expect to get paid for a hobby. You don't get expect paid to play video games or watch TV. Yeah. So for a lot of that, that's okay. But if we're going to put in a little bit of extra time that it would take, I think, more than what I would be just doing for fun to yeah. make it good... Um, I think there be needs to be some sort of return like that to make it worthwhile. So that's just the sort of answering your question directly. And so I guess when you look at it that way, YouTube right now kind of is what our podcast is, right? That's true. Yeah, we've got the we've got the weekly format, we've got the content coming like this, and this is just a format where we get paid for it. So this is our takeoff point for uh, maybe talking about some of the podcasts we listen to and really like. Okay, well I have to mention the McElroy brothers. Um, their entire family does an insane amount of podcast stuff, and they're like probably the biggest single contributors of maximum stuff I fun. To. They're maximum fun. Well, not all their stuff is on maximum fun, but uh, a bunch of it is. I was just saying they are maximum fun. They are the most fun that you can have listening to podcasts. <laughs> they're also on the maximum fun network. Right. But um, so I listen to uh, a ton of their stuff. My brother, my brother, and me. The Adventure Zone. Right. Really, almost everything that any one of the brothers has touched or. Um, their family, like their their wives, all do a right. podcast with them each, and it's all really really good stuff. I like the medical history one. What's that one called? Sawbones. Sawbones. That's uh, Justin McElroy and Sydney McElroy, his wife, who is an actual MD, so yeah. she knows what she's talking about, and okay. he is also there. All right, now uh, oh, you should mention the first podcast. I think you introduced me to that we've uh... welcome to Night Vale. Excellent podcast. Maybe not what what's typical because I think a lot of podcasts when people talk about it, they talk about uh, non-fiction kind of stuff, Yeah, right? but um, that's actually, I think, probably one of the closest to, like, a really mainstream, mainstream podcast. So, yeah, we, we uh, listen to a bunch of stuff. For me, right now, I think I'm mostly just on my uh, grind through the McElroy brother-related suite. I've got one, suite. actually, that I've been listening to that maybe you're not aware of is uh, Levine and Hollywood. So it's a podcast by a comedy writer, Ken Levine, and I've been a big fan of his ever since he was doing some of my favorite comedies like Cheers. I think he was involved in Taxi. He definitely did MASH. And he is he has a blog. He's really popular. And he's branching out. And I think in the last year or so, he's been doing a podcast, which is a lot of fun where he has he talks about uh, his experiences in the entertainment industry and just whatever comes to mind that he wants to do. There's one where he actually had Angelian. See, for those of you who are old enough to remember, Angelian was an actress, but he actually went to high school with her, which is kind of funny. They had a nice conversation. I, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I think I think podcasts are, are really cool. I think we both really enjoy them a lot. So it's really flattering to hear somebody say that they think we would be good at it because, to me, that seems like yeah. a pretty good compliment because, you know, I, I tend to hold podcasters in pretty high regard as media and content creators. Yeah, which is kind of funny, too, because al I've always thought that we, we sort of did the same thing in YouTube, at least, the space. I feel like what we're doing is at a level which is way smaller than any of the really popular oh, YouTubers. Yeah. But the equivalent of being, you know, on uh, community access cable, mm -hmm. where people get on, they maybe don't reach a lot of people, but they, you know, have they a do bit of fun. Thing, yeah. do they thing. just do whatever, and it's not really for the views or for anything. It's just for the heck of it. Yeah. And because it's, you know, it's fun to do. Yeah, it is. It's really, it's an enjoyable experience overall. Yeah, so um, thanks a lot, Anonymous B, for the compliment and for the question and giving us the takeoff point for the tea of the week. Yeah. So there we go. I think that, I think that wraps it up for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Komoda. Komoda.